All right, what's going on, everyone? Put out a poll a few months ago asking, outside of the Ukraine-Russia war, which conflict do you wish got more coverage than it does? The winner that we're going to talk about today, the Mexican drug war, followed by the Israeli-Palestinian conflict that was in a video I put up yesterday, as well as the Yemeni civil war. I'm still learning about Myanmar. I, I work in progress there. It's a very complicated conflict. For whatever reason, I'm having a hard time uh, kind of parsing everything out there. So uh, hopefully I can add that to these updates before too long. But for today, we're going to focus on the Mexican drug war and Afghanistan. The video that went up yesterday was more focused on the Middle East. So that hit Iran, Iraq, Syria, the Israeli-Palestine conflict, and Yemen. Now for these kind of summary videos that we're going to get into here, they're not designed to be like breaking news for any of these conflicts. They're specifically a week later. So in this video, we're going to cover November 12th through November 18th. That gives the information time to kind of settle out to hopefully give more accurate information here. All right, starting in Mexico, the drug war there is just insane. Every time I learn more about it, I'm just kind of blown away. But anyways, over the course of the last week, gang attacks against civilians drove an increase in violence across Guerrero State last week, most of which occurred in the tourist city of Acapulco. At least seven people were killed in separate attacks in Acapulco, including three men whose bound bodies were found with signs of torture. It's a full-on war zone down there. According to security experts, the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, the Independent Cartel of Acapulco, and Los Rusos Gang dispute for the control of extortions and drug markets in Acapulco. It's surprisingly difficult to get like really good, reliable reporting about the drug war in Mexico. We're going to be able to hit on some topics here at 10,000-foot view, uh, but it's proven challenging to really dig into the weeds. Elsewhere in Guerrero, unidentified gang members reportedly killed four people and abandoned their mutilated bodies on a road, while a clash between rival gangs reportedly left at least four more people dead. In Guadalupe, unidentified gang members reportedly killed five people, while unidentified gang members conducted a drive-by shooting that reportedly killed the treasurer of the Mexican Social Security Institute and injured another man. And finally, the last update in terms of the drug war in Mexico. Amid increasing violence in the state, National Guard and military officers carried out security operations on 15 November, clashing with CJNG members, reportedly killing at least four men. During the clashes, CJNG members forced civilians to abandon their vehicles and set those on fire to block roads around the urban city of Jerez. Again, it is a full-on war down there, and if for no other reason than it's close to the United States, I think it's probably worth keeping an eye on. Shifting over to Afghanistan, a little more my bread and butter here. Clashes broke out between Pakistani security forces and the Taliban in Kandahar and Paktia provinces last week following a deadly cross-border incursion into Pakistan by an Afghan-based militant. Nothing new there. There's been clashes at the border for as long as the Taliban have been around. For a long time, the United States was tiptoeing around how do you deal with uh, Taliban members that cross the border or fire from the Pakistani side of the border. Same thing that Pakistan is having to deal with now. On November 13th, an unknown Afghan gunman crossed the Durand Line and attacked Pakistani border forces, that's the Afghan-Pakistan border, killing one and wounding others before crossing back across the border to Afghanistan. The attack triggered a clash between Taliban and Pakistani forces in Spin Boldak, district of Kandahar province, in which eight Pakistani soldiers and three Taliban members were reportedly killed. Pakistani forces demanded that the Taliban hand the Milton over, but the request was denied. I could be wrong here, but I remember a lot more attacks against U.S. and Afghan border checkpoints than I do Pakistan checkpoints while the U.S. and NATO were in country. When there were U.S. forces manning those checkpoints, like, of course, they want to attack U.S. and NATO forces, and then the Afghan Border Patrol or Afghan National Police, Afghan Army, whoever might be manning those points without U.S. forces were viewed as being, you know, in bed with NATO. So they were also a prime target for the Taliban. Maybe the attacks on Pakistani checkpoints just weren't getting as much attention because our own bases were being attacked. But I'm not exactly sure the rationale for Taliban members to be attacking Pakistani checkpoints right now. Anyways, two days after that attack, one Afghan civilian was killed when clashes erupted between Pakistani forces and the Taliban along the Duran Line in Paktia province. Another Afghan civilian was also shot and killed by Pakistani security forces in unclear circumstances of, in uh, Paktika on the same day. The outbreak of violence along the border led to a week-long closure of a border crossing, a principal hub for trade and movement between 
the two countries. Again, this will be something to keep an eye on. It's definitely a spike in terms of the Taliban striking out against Pakistani targets. Continuing on, unidentified assailants killed two TTP commanders during separate instances in Afghanistan last week. One commander was shot and killed by an unknown gunman in Paktia province, marked here on the map, while the body of a second commander was found in Nangarhar province, also marked here on the map. Something to keep in mind when you hear the term commander in this context it doesn't necessarily mean they're in charge of like hundreds of fighters, a large organization, or like run an entire province. It could be something as small as like 10 fighters that report to them. In turn, they're referred to as a commander. Finally, more than a dozen attacks targeting TTP militants have been reported in Afghanistan in 2022, the majority of which have remained unclaimed. Tensions between Pakistan and the Taliban have escalated since the group assumed power in Afghanistan in August 2021 with Pakistan accusing the Taliban of harboring militant groups, including the TTP. Pakistan has been dealing with a spike in militant attacks within its border since last year, which Pakistani officials have linked to the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan. So kind of interesting to see how that played out. For the longest time, the U.S. and the Afghan government were frustrated because there were Taliban militants finding safe harbor in Pakistan. They would cross the border, conduct attacks, and move back into essentially safe territory. Pakistan has pushed through some of those areas uh, to try to clear out the Taliban in the past, but the U.S. was unable to really cross over that border for a conventional military strike that happened over and over daily for a long period of time. So interesting to see that when the power shifts in Kabul, now that Pakistan's getting a little frustrated that the fighters are moving across that porous border. Obviously, there's more going on in the world than just the war in Ukraine. Admittedly, that's really drawn me in over the last couple of months, just the potential impact that could have to all of us. But I'm going to try to get into more of a you know, weekly cadence with high-level overviews of these other conflicts going on all around the world. But that'll do it for now. We'll see you all next time.